Hey guys, Lucas here. Got an update on the wireless pixel stuff. Uh, as you can see, I've got four of these wireless panels now. Um, previous videos I've had two, I made two more. Uh, if you're curious about how they're made, uh, let me know. I can post some more information in another video or uh, on the website. Basically though, this is Ray Wu's 16x16 flexible panel and, and the rest is uh, just 3D printed um, glue. Nothing, nothing crazy. Uh, they're prototypes, but they're also very usable, um, depending on what you're trying to do. But yeah, got a couple of big updates for this video. Um, one is the hardware, two is the software. I can show you update one. It's literally on the back of this Node MCU. I uh, got this nifty adapter board, uh, product of Volt Vision, still being iterated on. It's got some cool new things uh, coming in the next version, like uh, the screw terminals that you have on uh, the pix lights and stuff like that. Uh, but very plug and play. Uh, the biggest uh, two points is this got a level shifter built on, and it's an incredibly small level shifter with one output. So uh, very small, very cheap. Um, also, it's got an LED on the back. As you can see, it's a WS2812B in uh, type, and it's pretty much synced up with this first LED right here in the corner. Anyways, the point of that is mostly for R&D and debugging. Um, Sometimes you need to find out how the wireless is going to work in a certain place, and that certain place may not be very convenient to bring in a whole bunch of LED panels. Uh, so that's good for like taking your laptop, a small portable router, and a few of these Node MCUs, and testing it out in a place, in a coffee shop, in a bar, in a small venue before actually you know risking a full uh, show or a full performance or a full art installation or whatever it is you're doing on that technology. So um, anyways, I'll have lots of updates on the reliability aspect of wireless in crowded congested areas. I mean, we all are used to using our phones, but the Node MCU is kind of a special case. So um, that light basically helps me debug and it helps anybody else uh, debug as well. So on the software end, things have been moving quite fast and quite far further than I thought they were going to in the first place. And I mean that in a great, good positive way. Um, basically the the Node MCUs will have two uh, different modes. Um, the mode that you're seeing right now is, is streaming where every pixel is being transmitted at 60 frames a second or less if you want to uh, from Touch Designer. Uh, I'm going to release more information on the protocol. You don't have to use Touch Designer but that's going to be what my, my, my most um, full example will we'll be in because that's what I use. Uh, but you know, I'll have a processing example out there eventually too. Uh, so this is streaming. Streaming's pretty much done. There might be some optimizations uh, to squeeze out a little bit more performance later, but uh, the biggest changes are happening on um, the other two fronts. One of those is the non-real-time mode, which uh, if you're familiar with Hue's um, Philip Hue, uh, it's that smart bulb. Um, you don't need to know the specifics, but basically the way it works is you, you have an app or, you know, if this, then that, or, or whatever service that sends simple commands like, hey, turn red, hey, turn blue, turn green. Uh, so it's not streaming that data, it's just telling it to turn to a different color. Well, that kind of um, situation is is nice, and there's times where that, that's really desirable, even for, like, live shows and stuff like that. So these Node MCUs, the software is going to have a mode for uh, for that as well, where you can send commands and just tell the entire panel to, you know, flash at a certain rate, at a certain color, or blink, or a few other generative effects, but they're going to be pretty basic. Uh, but they'll allow you to do things like strobes, chases, or simply set colors, right? Um, and that's, that's going to be able to be done through um, HTTP post commands and rest commands. Uh, so it's a little bit different, but it's going to work kind of in parallel to the streaming. So you could stop streaming and you could start sending post commands uh, or vice versa. So that's gonna be really flexible. So in situations where you wanna have these things attached to a stage, but you don't have the bandwidth or or the, the clean airways to stream data, you can send stuff, right? So I can say be red, be purple, flash between orange and red or you know whatever really suits the mood um, also we can use this in home automation and home lighting uh, so that's pretty exciting too 
Um, and and that's that's the main thing. The last thing to note on the software end is you can you can request different types of information. Uh, so if you uh, every every node MCU is going to have an IP address, right? So if you type that into your browser, uh, let's say if it's 10.10.10.200, which is one of these four, and then I type that IP address in, then slash, then get status, I can see um, a few pieces of information on, on the node MCU. So I can see its IP address, which I already know. I can see its port. I can see you know a few other pieces of information. We have another one called get frames, which is another debug. Um, option when you type in slash get frames you get uh, a list of the last two seconds worth of frames uh, so basically you can check uh, dropped frames milliseconds per frame all of the um, kind of low level information about the data once it gets on to the node MCU so that's useful uh, we have another one called um, slash survey which is being worked on currently at the moment uh, and that lets you kind of get a preview of what the node MCU sees in terms of SSIDs in the area. So, you know, while you pull out your phone and you can see, oh, well, this, this Wi-Fi has really good signal strength, you can check it through the node MCU's Wi-Fi board, right? And you might see a different story being told. Uh, the, the antenna is not quite probably as strong as it is on our phones. So, you know, if you're not getting good signal strength, you can you can check the survey and kind of see what the node MCU sees. Maybe it's being blocked, maybe it's just not strong enough. Uh, and then you can make adjustments as necessary to your uh, wireless environment. The last thing I'll, I'll say there, um, and this is the last thing I'll say in this video, is that in addition to getting information, you'll also be able to set information. Uh, the goal is to eventually not have to go into Arduino whatsoever. So things like pixel length, chunk size, which are you know protocol related, uh, and maybe a few other things like amperage cutoff, uh, those things will all be able to be set via uh, certain commands too, HTTP commands. So um, looking forward to all of that. And uh, of course, I'll have a new video out on the software and that deserves its own video. So sooner or later, we'll have that out to you as well. But uh, that's it for this video. Thanks.